Hello, my name is Victor Lopez, and this is Direct Democrats. I have a website, directdemocrats.com. I also have this channel in YouTube, which is Victor Lopez, Direct Democrats. My mission in life is direct democracy. I am convinced direct democracy, especially Swiss style direct democracy, is the superior system, is the natural evolution for representative democracies. Representative democracies are a great improvement over dictatorships, absolute kings, etc. But direct democracy is just a big an improvement over representative democracy. I love to speak about direct democracy anywhere in the world, in English and Spanish. I could participate in forums, conferences, give speeches, being interviewed, and answer all the criticism directed at direct democracy. I especially rely on the Swiss model of direct democracy, because it's basically the only one in the world, also Taiwan and other countries that are starting to follow, but really the only one with a solid track record in Switzerland. And in other videos, I speak about many issues. Sometimes uh, are issues that are in the news and which I find relevant for a direct democracy, like, for example, the Russia-Ukraine war. But today I'm going to speak about something which I cannot prove scientifically, but I suspect there is a correlation between Swiss direct democracy and the success of Switzerland as a country. Because before, years ago, many years ago, Switzerland was not the number one country in the world that it is now. It was not a wealthy country, and they had lots of infighting. They even had civil wars in Switzerland. You wouldn't believe that, but they do. But in the 1800s, they changed the constitution. They basically brought direct democracy, and they also did something which I think is an important aspect of the Swiss system. I think it is that they decided that the responsibility for governance will rely as much as possible in the individual, the municipality, the canton, which is like an American state or a Canadian province or a German lander or a Spanish autonomous community, and the federal government. The municipality assumes all responsibilities that it can and delegates to the upper government, to the next government up, which is the canton, other functions. And depending on the municipality, its size, and the canton and the legislation, they may delegate more or less. But the idea is the people below decide what the people above will handle. And the same process is repeated at the canton level. The cantons will handle everything they can and they will delegate up to the federal government whatever it is that they cannot handle or that they feel is not appropriate, like defense, foreign relations, and other issues. I think that's one key aspect of the success of Switzerland. And the other one is obviously direct democracy. Direct democracy means Swiss citizens at the municipal level, the canton level, and the national level, have more executive and legislative power than the politicians. And I feel this arrangement has something to do with the success of Switzerland. Because, for example, Switzerland ranks number one in the United Nations Human Development Index that takes into account the healthcare system, the education system, and the income, the real income per capita. So I, I think that direct democracy has something to do with that because direct democracy brings common sense to legislation. You see, it's not like in representative democracies where the politicians, once the election is over, they, basic, they basically do anything they want. I mean, they may disagree among themselves or agree among themselves, but the people cannot stop them from doing anything in between elections. People will have to riot or strike, uh, even cause violence to change the minds of governments in representative democracies. And this applies from Norway to Italy, from Italy to Canada, from the states uh, to Norway, and uh, everything else in between. 
In direct democracy, the people have more power than the politicians. And I feel, because the people do not have to run for re-election, that they approve laws and treaties and policies that have more common sense. They do not, they do not decide all laws and policies, but the Swiss people decide at the local level, the canton level, and the national level, any law or policy that they want to decide upon. It could be to impose it on the politicians or to stop the politicians from passing a law or to kill a law. And the Swiss people also have the authority, the only authority really, to change the Swiss constitution. Not even the Supreme Court judges in Switzerland can overturn the results of a referendum. Another index where Switzerland runs better than any of its neighbors and therefore practically all countries in the world, is poverty. The poverty ratio in Switzerland is lower than the poverty ratio in comparable countries. Perhaps it's something to do with the prosperity. But remember, the income per capita in Switzerland is not much higher than the U.S., but the poverty line, the poverty rate in the U.S. is about three times Switzerland's. It must have something to do with the laws, how things are administered. Then the median net worth in Switzerland is the highest in the world. Homelessness. Homelessness in Switzerland is also lower than in all other comparable countries. I suspect this has something to, to do with the common sense laws the Swiss people pass. Remember, Switzerland is the only country in the world who put to a national referendum the issue of having a universal basic income for everybody. The referendum didn't pass this time, but it could. But it shows you the awareness. The things that concern the Swiss people are very bread and butter. In the other countries, in the United States, in Canada, in France, in the United Kingdom, in Germany, everything has to be filtered through the politicians. The Swiss people know. The Swiss people felt, a number of Swiss people felt that there should be a universal basic income. The measure didn't pass, but a high percentage of the Swiss, about one-third of the voters, supported the idea. This time didn't pass. Maybe, maybe, maybe next time it will pass. Then the health, the healthcare system. The healthcare system in Switzerland is considered number one. And it's very interesting because it's a mixed system. It's a system that is managed privately, but is supervised by the government. The result is the Swiss have the best healthcare system in the world. And it's universal and is of equal quality for everybody. The Swiss have the best qualified doctors, they have better access to doctors and specialists, they have less waiting times for non-urgency interventions, like a call program surgery, like uh, knee replacements, uh, hips, uh, cataract operations, and stuff like that. I suspect this, again, has something to do with direct democracy. Somehow, direct democracy pushes common sense. The Swiss didn't go for a taxpayer-funded universal healthcare system like they have in Canada or in France or in the United Kingdom or in many other countries. But they chose a system that it is better and provides universal health care. They also have more doctors per capita than practically any other comparable country. They have about twice as many doctors per capita as, for example, Canada. They have more than France, more than the United States, more than the United Kingdom, more than basically all other countries. I think it is time that we consider uh, direct democracy as an alternative, not just because it gives the people more power and therefore is a better democracy, which obviously it is. And forget about the phony rankings by the Economist Intelligence Unit that ranks Switzerland number 10 or number 12 in quality of democracy. democracy. is absolute baloney. It is baloney. The number one democracy in the world is Switzerland because democracy means government by the people. And the people in Switzerland 
do more in government, have more power to govern themselves than any other people. And it's time for countries like the United States, like Canada, France, etc., that they consider Swiss-style direct democracy. I don't mean California-style direct democracy, which has in common the name with Swiss direct democracy, but is very different. And as you can imagine, I consider Swiss direct democracy far better. Switzerland is also the most stable country in the world politically. It's the one with less conflict. It's the one with more cooperation at the political level. For God's sake, the four major parties in Switzerland always govern in coalition. So if you are tired of the fighting, of the controversies, of the polarization, and also are tired of not having enough doctors, not having a good school system as you should have, not having as good hospitals as you should have, of having too long waiting times for a doctor, of having more poor people than you should have, of having more homelessness than you should have, you should consider Swiss direct democracy. Study it. There is lots of information in the internet. Of course, like I said at the beginning, I am happy to give talks, speeches, participate in debates, being interviewed, participate in forums about direct democracy, explaining particularly how Swiss direct democracy works and how it will improve your town, your city, your village, your province, your state, and your country. If you are a representative democracy, it should not be too difficult to transition to direct democracy, because that's the situation the Swiss were at in the 1800s, and they transitioned to direct democracy. But yes, the politicians in representative democracies do not like direct democracy. The lobbies do not like direct democracy. Why? Because they lose power. The politicians lose power in a direct democracy. And when the politicians lose power, the lobbies lose power because they cannot get the politicians to do what they want. Please help me spread the word and the facts about direct democracy. Spread it yourself. If we don't do something, representative democracy will continue deteriorating because representative democracy gives too much power to the politicians. The situation is so bad that in some countries I hear some people already talking about how good the Chinese system is. And I'm, talking, I'm not talking only about desperate people, people in the elites, some politicians, some very wealthy people talk about the Chinese system. And I don't mean the Chinese Taiwan system, because that's a pretty good system, because it's a democracy and also has many important elements of Swiss direct democracy. They refer to the Chinese system in mainland China, the communist system in China. I mean, it's terrible how bad things can be in some representative democracies for people to consider a dictatorship as an alternative. These people are driving some representative democracies into the same situation that the representative democracy in Germany drove itself into in the 30s. Remember what came out of that. Politicians with their corruption, their separation from the people, their helping their friends, their disengagement, their irresponsibility with the national debt, you know, with printing money, with all that, I don't have to tell you, Switzerland is the most politically stable country and also financially. They have a very low national debt. They're fiscally responsible. And you know why? Because in Switzerland, the politicians cannot buy votes with their own money, with the money of the people or the money of the lobbies. They cannot do it because they do not have the power to execute what they will promise. The Swiss citizens do not run for election, the politicians have less power, and this is why Switzerland is basically number one in all areas. Not in all, every one of them single, but overall is the best country in the world. Is the number one country in the world as demonstrated in the Human Development Index of the United Nations. It's about time we do something. 
you will see all my videos with closed captions so you can read in subtitles whatever it is that you do not understand because my English is far from perfect and perhaps yours too. My videos are closed captioned in 33 languages of the world, most of them the most important languages. If you like the video, subscribe, talk about it, spread the idea, but do not complain about representative democracies. Do not complain about the politicians not caring about people like you. Instead of doing that, get going, get going and start to demand direct democracy. That's what the Swiss people did in the 1800s. They got it because they demanded. Interestingly, it was also after a pandemic that the politicians mismanaged. That is all for today. Thank you very much.